You may have heard the story, Sam the Minuteman by Nathaniel Benchley. Today I'd like to read you another story by the same author. It's called George the Drummer Boy. George was a drummer boy with the King's Soldiers. They were stationed in Boston 245 years ago. Boston at that time belonged to England. The Boston people did not like the taxes the king made them pay. Since they could not show their anger to the king, they showed it to his soldiers. George wanted to be friends with the people, but it was hard to be friends. All they did was shout and throw things at the soldiers. A spy told the British commander, People are hiding cannon and gunpowder in Concord. Concord was a town about 20 miles from Boston. The commander, General Gage, decided to send troops out to capture all the cannon and powder they could find. He made his plans in secret so the people would be taken by surprise. First, he picked two companies of soldiers and said they were going to have special training. George's company was one of these. When he heard the news, he went to see his friend Fred. What does it mean, he asked. No idea, Fred replied. Why not ask someone, said George. In the army, you don't ask questions, Fred said. You do as they tell you. Next, General Gage had men fix the barges and longboats. Maybe this means we go to sea, George said. I hope not, said Fred, unless, of course, they're taking us home. Home to England. Do you think that's where they were going? Three nights later, after the soldiers had gone to bed, they were awakened and told to get dressed. What kind of training is this, George asked. Do they want us to play owls? Don't ask, said Fred, just dress. The moon was bright. They could see the barges that would take them across the water. George had his drum, but since they were told to be quiet, he didn't use it. He just waited to see what would happen next. They crowded into the boats and barges and were rowed across the Charles River to Charlestown. It was early spring. The wind from the east was cold. George sat close to Fred to keep warm. In Charlestown, they waded ashore through water up to their knees, and then they waited. They waited for two hours, standing around, shivering in the cold. Behind them in Boston, George saw two lights in the spire of Old North Church. I wonder what they mean, he said. Most likely they're a signal, said Fred. For what, asked George. The general hasn't told me. George was too cold to laugh or talk. At last they started to march. The major was in charge of George's company. He told them they were going to Concord to look for hidden guns and powder. George sneezed. Shh, said Fred, you'll wake the countryside. After a while, they could hear the boom of cannon in the distance. Far off, church bells were ringing. Dim shapes of running men went by them in the dark. They heard the thud of horses' hooves. Who do you think that might be? I think they know we're coming, George said. I told you not to sneeze so loud, said joke, said Fred. <laughs> Big joke, said George. I'm scared. Those lights we saw. They must have been a signal that we were on our way. 
That's right, Fred replied. This may turn out to be a very long day. Slowly, the day began to break. Birds chirped and twittered in the trees. When it was light enough, George could see apple blossoms on the trees beside the road. He could see the town of Lexington and men hurrying toward it across the fields. Who do you think those men were? If you read Sam the Minute Man, you'll know. There were 80 Minutemen on the green. They were called Minutemen because they had to be ready at a minute's notice. They had guns. All George had was his drum. He hoped there would not be a fight. When the Minutemen saw how many soldiers there were, they started to move away. The Major told his soldiers not to fire. He shouted at the people to disperse, then moved his men in closer. Someone, somewhere, fired a shot. Nobody was hit, but it started the soldiers shooting. They fired three volleys, then broke ranks and ran at the Minutemen. The Major got his men back in order and marched them off to Concord. Eight Minutemen had been killed. It happened so fast that George had no time to be afraid. In Concord, there were more Minutemen waiting on a hill across a bridge. There were more than at Lexington, and still more were coming every minute. George began to wonder, what was he doing here? I wish I was back in Boston, he told Fred. Me too, said Fred. I don't like this place one bit. All the guns and powder had been taken out of Concord and hidden somewhere else. George saw some soldiers setting a fire. What are they doing that for, he asked. They have to do something, Fred said. They can't come all this way for nothing. Well, it seems pretty silly to me, said George. The Minutemen saw the smoke and thought the town was being burned. They charged down the hill at the soldiers, and the soldiers turned and fled. I knew that was a bad idea, George said as he ran. Look what they started. By now, the Minutemen were all around. They fired from behind fences, stone walls, and picked the soldiers off as they ran. It seemed to George that everywhere he looked, a Minuteman was pointing a gun at him. George looks very frightened. Fred shouted and dropped his gun. A bullet had hit him in the arm. Are you all right, George asked. Ask me later, Fred replied. This is no time to talk. George picked up the gun and kept on running. The soldiers' muskets did not have bullets in them, as the book says. They had musket balls. They were little balls made out of lead. At Lexington, they met more British soldiers who had come out of Boston to help. These soldiers had two cannons, which kept the Minuteman away until the others could escape. It was dark and raining by the time they got back to Charlestown. Nobody knew or cared that this was the start of the American Revolution. When it was over, America would not be part of England, but a country on its own. All George and the others wanted was to get safely back to Boston. 
It had been, as Fred said, a mighty long day. Very sad day for both sides. The author has a note at the end of the book. I'd like to read it to you. Just as it takes two sides to make a war, so there must be two sides for every battle. Sometimes they, they are alike, and other times they are wildly different. This is a guess at how the British soldiers felt before and during the battles of Lexington and Concord. As guesses go, it should not be too far from wrong. George, the drummer boy. I'd like to wish everyone a happy Patriots Day, the 245th anniversary of that day.